Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm kind of excited for today's video. So, a few months ago, I put through an order at a knife store in Australia. AKC Knives Australia is what they're called. Now, with what's going on in Australia, if you know, you know, their shipments are incredibly slow and things just aren't going so well. So after a very long wait time, which I know wasn't entirely the fault of the owner of the store, my shipment arrived, and here's the result. Now, this is going to be a bit of a history video as well as a review. Joseph Rogers of Sheffield, and you may have to skip this. If you are only here to see the knife, you may want to skip this because this might be just a, a few minutes of me talking. Joseph Rogers of Sheffield used to be the biggest pocket knife manufacturer in the entire world one day. Back in the early 1900s, they produced, I believe, over one and a half million knives with only around 50 or so people working in their factory. Don't quote me on that. I'm not certain. That's just what I heard. So they were, they were once a huge manufacturer, and they were the most sold pocket knives in the world. You know, they made Sheffield famous. When every uh, a box like this, and this is the kind of packaging they used, these old little cardboard boxes, they look like the kind of boxes you'd see at a shave store, and they'd be little boxes of razor blades for um, a replaceable straight razor. And they just, they have that classic old school look that just, it ages very well. And this is how they would have come back in the back in the day and Joseph Rogers of Sheffield is perhaps the oldest knife manufacturer I have a knife from even older than Kissing Crane which is recently sold to China as you can see here it says makers of fine knives for over 300 years and they got their Maltese cross trademark in 1682 yeah that means in 2022, on New Year's, they will be celebrating, if my math is correct, their 300th and 340th anniversary. I just tried doing that quickly in my head. I'm pretty sure that's the number, but do not quote me on that again. I'm, I'm tired as always, and, well, I might be wrong in that. But even so, they've been around for over 300 years. That's a very long time. And it says made in Sheffield, England. They are still making these in Sheffield. This is owned by the Eggington Group, along with IXL Wollstoneholm and Iberson, which are two other knife manufacturers that were native to Sheffield. They're still making knives today. And once again, I am not sponsored whatsoever. This is just me saying, if you have the opportunity to get one of these, I kindly ask you, please even if you're not planning on using it, please buy one of these knives. Because from what I heard, the Eggington group who owns Joseph Rogers and & Sons and Joseph Rogers & Sons as a whole, they make very little money off of these knives. And they used to be the biggest knife manufacturer in the world. Now they're just forgotten, lost to the sands of time, I suppose. So please, just if you have the opportunity, please just buy one of these knives even for the collector's purpose, because this brand, I I hope that one day this brand won't just fade out of memory completely. I It is my goal that small brands that have since been forgotten will return, and if not be as great as they once were, at very least will get acknowledgement. So I hope that by making this video, it'll reach some people, and they will be able to see what these knives are like, and why I think that just invest a little bit of money. They're not that expensive. You could buy about two of these for the price of one case knife, or maybe three or four of these for the price of a GEC. So please, if you have the opportunity, get one of these knives. You won't regret it. It's just, it's a classic knife from an old brand that was once ever so popular, and now really... No one knows about them anymore, which is really sad to me. Uh, of course, I've already opened these. It comes with a little certificate of authenticity. And 
Let me just unfold this. I'm not going to read this out, but if you want, pause this now. Right there. Pause that and go ahead and read about the knife. This is their little certificate of authenticity here. And yeah, there you are. Comes with that. It's just got some instructions here. But this was one of the knives I bought. This is a Warrencliffe pocket knife with rosewood scales. So as you can see, it's reasonably small. And it's got a nice nail nick here. A strong back spring. <clears throat> and it's about six inches or so open. Uh, stainless steel for the blade. As you can see, there's a very nice stamp here. Stainless Sheffield, England. This is a stainless blade. And I will say, it's not the best Warrencliffe in the world, but it's certainly not the worst. I do quite like that. It's very, very sharp. These are hand sharpened, as you can see, by the imperfect sharpening groove. Or line, I suppose. So these aren't done by a machine. These are done by hand. Nickel silver bolsters. Got a nice stainless steel back spring. Not the greatest fit there. Very, very, very slight blade play, but nothing that's going to affect the performance of the knife. And one thing I like about this, other than the very strong spring, by the way, this is a very nice snap. Here, listen. Very nice. I like the rosewood that they use here. As you can see on this side, it's got a very red look to it. It's a nice red rosewood, hence, well, rosewood. And I've got another piece of rosewood here that's also from a Sheffield knife. This is my Arthur Wright and Son Lambfoot. So as you can see, this is also a nice red wood. This is, this is also rosewood. You can see, quite similar. Although, on this side, it almost looks more like ebony. But it is rosewood. You can see the difference from here. That's just what happens with natural wood. This piece is darker. This one's lighter. It's just part of the, the knife, I guess. The pins are very, very, very flush. Transitions are beautiful. Blade centering is off. That is one thing. It's not the best. But the cutoff of the spring is far better than Arthur Wright and Son's work. Brass liners. You can pinch the blade open. It's got a sharpening choil. And you can put your finger under here. And kind of get some extra precision work going on. This is a satin finish blade, so not too shiny. And this is the, probably out of all the things of this knife, you could try nitpicking all day about, oh, this is bad and this is bad, but the one thing that I am sad about is the logo. This was stamped on, and as you can see, I haven't put this knife through difficult use. I haven't overused it. I haven't abused it. Nothing like that. But because it was stamped on, the it's just sad because it rubs off. This used to say Rogers, and it used to have this this word right here, so this in this style. Very small within a little shield. And it was sad because I like seeing a shield on a knife. And if they had either carved it into the wood or put an actual shield and stamped a metal shield or brass shield into the wood, it would have remained. But because it's just stamped on, it's going to rub off, and that's that's sad to me. I do think that that's the one fail that this knife does certainly have. <coughs> but really, you're buying this more for the historical purposes than as a user knife, and you could. If you're, if you're just the average working person, you don't care about how fancy your knife is, this would absolutely work for you because you're getting stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about taking care of it, You've got a nice hardwood handle, and this is one thing I do like. 
it gets thicker by the back. So you can see it fills the palm really nicely. You can use it like this, like this. And the blade shape is very utilitarian, especially for, wo for woodworking, whittling, carving, etc. And well, if you're not a knife snob, centering won't bother you. And for that, while we're there, nor will a blade wobble. Really, it's it's just more of me being a knife, a bit of a knife snob. It, it bothers me when it normally wouldn't bother most people. The one thing about this that I do think is interesting, it doesn't bother me. It would probably bother some people. Look at that. You notice something is off here. Look at the bolsters. This one's bigger, and that one's smaller. Now, this is both bad, bad, and also good. I say this because while, yes, it's imperfect, it also shows that this is a perfectly, well, not perfectly, this is definitely a handmade knife. This is not machine-made whatsoever. And there's something about that. Even though it's not perfect, and yes, you could argue that the knife is a waste because look at that, the bolsters are so offset. At the same time, it shows this is not a knife that was put in a machine and it came out all perfectly made and there are no flaws in it whatsoever. As Eric from Slick Slicers, a channel I quite like, said about another knife, of course, this knife is per perfect in its imperfections. And by that I mean it's certainly no masterpiece, it's no GEC. At the same time, there's something special about it, and I do quite enjoy that. So at the end of the day, no. Is this the best knife in the world? Absolutely not. Is it the worst knife in the world? Absolutely not as well. Is it an amazing collector's piece? Yes. Is it good for people who just want a working knife? Yes. Is it good for the price? Absolutely. Should you buy one? Yes. Should you expect to get a custom $4,000 Damascus steel file work? titanium with meteorite inlay kind of knife? Absolutely not. If you think that that's what you're getting, you're insane. So, yeah, at the end of the day, you've got a historical knife that's hand-finished with nice natural rosewood. I will say they did do a good job on the transitions and how flush the pins are, even though the centering's off and there's a tiny bit of wobble. I've also seen that Joseph Rogers had a style where the blades would kind of go down a little bit. And I know this out of experience because this one does it, but also because I bought another Joseph Rogers knife along with this one, and it has the same thing. This one's actually quite a bit better, so I'll show you this one in the next video. But in the meantime, sorry, my nose is kind of stuffed. Allergies again. Um, it's a good knife. You're getting stainless steel, probably 440A, 420. It's not the greatest steel, but not the worst. It's very sharp. It's comfortable to hold, fills the palm very well. It's a great historical thing to buy. I'd recommend it to anyone. And as for the quality, is it as good as Arthur Wright? Or is Arthur Wright as good as it? Arthur Wright has even bolsters. Um, decent transitions. I'd say this one's slightly better. But the blade centering on the Arthur Wright is equally bad, and the cutoff on the spring on this one is bad. Well, this one's actually quite good. Now, but the Arthur Wright, though, don't go ahead and say that this Arthur Wright is so perfect, or even good for that matter, because, well, yeah, that's something for uh, another video uh, altogether. But, in the meantime, <laughs> yeah, I would recommend this. If you want a basic working knife, especially if you're in the UK and you want something traditional that isn't going to land you with four years in jail and a $10,000 fine, this will be a good choice. If you want something to put in your Knives of History collection, then yes, this will be a good choice as well. If you want to gift a knife to a younger person, something that'll be good for wood carving, this would be a nice choice. And if you just want something for yourself, a nice little classic knife that is inexpensive, this is a good idea. 
this is about $50 Canadian, so for my US viewers, that would be around 40 ish. And for my UK viewers, that would be roughly 35, 30. Probably around 30. So, yes, you could argue it's still not perfect, but at the end of the day, you're getting a historical knife from a brand that's struggling. And yet it's still, at the end of the day, going to get you through whatever tasks you may have. I think that it's a good choice. So, do do me a favor. If you have the chance to get one of these, please do. The brand's struggling, and they need some support. So yeah, I'd, I'd recommend this to someone. Even though it's not the best knife in the world, it's still timeless, and it's perfect in its imperfections. And I'm happy to say that I own one finally. Well, two actually. Oh, the back spring. I mean, I'd buy this just for the back spring. Listen to this. It's it's simply beautiful. The snap is just wonderful. Sadly, there's no stop pin. So there might be blade wrap, but I just love that sound. Anyway, so this has been the Joseph Rogers and Sons Rosewood Warncliffe pocket knife. And if you like the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Comment, ring the bell, all that fancy stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. This has been the Streaming Enderman. As always, signing off. Goodbye.